why don't I welcome a guy to the party here that's got the best beard in the business during the uh, this time, <laughs> and he is uh, the head coach of your Ohio State Buckeyes on our 97.1 The Fan Virtual Draft Party brought to you by Raising Canes and Bobcat Enterprises. He's the head coach, Ryan Day. Coach, looking great. Congratulations so far. No, thanks. Thanks. It's been a uh, quite a night, you know, just to see these guys, you know, and it's, it's funny, you know, we're spending so much time recruiting right now and talking to young families and uh, young men about, you know, the dream of getting drafted in the NFL and to see these guys, you know, go like this, it's just awesome. Yeah, I'll let Dave jump in as well here, but let's let's go. You got them right in order. How cool was that to see Burrow and Chase and Jeff go boom, 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 the trifecta, guys that you're very familiar with. That's unprecedented stuff. It really is, and, and I think the cool thing about it is they all have different journeys along the way, you know, and, and uh, the thing I, I keep talking about is the fact that, you know, when, when you have potential and talent and it mixes in with discipline and skill, that's when, that's when something special happens, and Everybody has their own journey. You know, for Joe, it kind of took that fifth year for him to really go like this. And, and I think for Jeff and, and Chase, it was that third year. And, uh, you know, and, and all three of those guys had remarkable seasons. And all three of these organizations are getting, you know, generational talents. Coach, you talked to us a lot about J.K. Dobbins last spring. You really challenged him. You said he, he's got to step up for us. He's got to be great. You talked about it in fall camp. And my goodness, was he great. The first Ohio State running back to ever go over 2,000 yards. Just talk about his development and, you know, give a little, uh, give a little uh, infomercial about why an NFL team should maybe take him late in the first round. Well, I think first off, J.K. Uh, has a lot, of, a lot of carries left in his body. You know, there's there certain running backs that you know, by the time they get to the NFL, they're, they're beat up. Uh, he's got a lot of mileage left. And I think that uh, his versatility is off the charts. I think what you saw him do, catching the ball when you can see him uh, pass protect, but then – uh, his great vision, uh, change direction. He can run the zone. He can run the power. And then you're getting a great kid, you know, just, you know, leadership, the toughness. Uh, I mean, he's the first guy to give you a hug when you walk in the locker room. So uh, when you combine all of those things, uh, someone's going to get a great back. And, uh, and I think JK is really excited about, uh, you know, today, you know, hopefully it's, it's maybe the end of this round. If not, it'll be tomorrow. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, Coach Ryan Day with us from Ohio state and on a very busy night tonight. Uh, Chase Young, Maryland kid, getting to go play for Washington. Um, certainly, I know his dream would have been to be the top pick in the draft, but, you know, maybe fate lended a hand here a little bit, Coach, in the fact that, you know, he was with his family tonight and, and he gets to play for the Washington Redskins. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, it's amazing just to think both he and Dwayne are both Maryland guys who get to, you know, grow up as Redskins and then get to play together. And, and Terry McLaurin's going to be there now. I mean, so it's, it's pretty amazing. All three of those guys are, are going to, uh, be teammates again. So uh, they're doing a good job of drafting in, in, in Washington. And, and I think that this is a great pick and a great spot for him and he'll be close to his family, which is great. Uh, but, but, you know, I think they're getting a ready-made guy. So he's going to make an impact early on. And, and I think that organization's, you know, really starting to draft really well. And I, I think the future is going to be bright for him. These are such trying times, Coach, for, for everybody. But, you know, talking to your assistant coaches, they're, they're saying you're doing such a great job of, of trying to make the most of this time. Can you talk to Ohio State fans about this and some of the things you're doing to just try to try to make the best of this trying time? Yeah, I mean, I think the hardest part is not knowing what's next for all of us and, uh, and, and knowing that uh, this is not an ideal situation for anybody, uh, you know, to put it mildly. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, there, there's a Buckeye Nation out there. There's a team. Uh, there's a group of people that just are dying to get back together. And so that's the hard part of this thing. But in the meantime, uh, it, it's trying to maximize your day and, and, and really show our discipline that we have the ability to motivate ourselves when we don't have the coaches around or each other around to push each other. And that's the ultimate test of discipline, you know, when motivation is not there uh, or, you know, the influence of the coaches isn't there. So what a great test for our team and for our coaching staff to find out, you know, really what we're made of and, and how, uh, you know, how tough we are mentally and, and with our discipline. So, uh, we're doing a lot of meetings. We're doing team meetings. We're bringing people in to talk to the team. We had Anthony Gonzalez speak to the team on Wednesday, uh, which was awesome. We talked about phase one, phase two, phase three, and then his experience uh, getting into politics after he got done playing in the NFL. Uh, the week before, we did a mental health talk to the team. And the week before that, we had Dr. Borchers come on and talk about COVID-19 and just give uh, the team some information on, on the virus itself, you know, uh, because there's a lot of information out there that some, some's real, some isn't. And so it was great for that. And then, and then we're doing position meetings and having the coaches talk to them, work on leadership, motivation, and, 
Uh, they're in the finals this week, so hopefully we can finish strong. Goals will be over 3-0, even with all this going on. Uh, so there's still a lot going on, but but it is difficult. And uh, and I think one of the other, the other things is the players are getting a little restless, you know, being at home where that dynamic and that that uh, that rhythm is now different, where typically families are used to their, their sons being away uh, at college, and now they're, they're at home for two months, and uh, I think they're bumping into each other a lot, but but they're, they're working through it. And uh, I, I think the silver lining is being able to spend more time with your family. And, and that's, you know, family dinners and that kind of stuff and reconnecting. So uh, I think when you combine all those things, that's how we're trying to maximize it. Coach, uh, I'm sure you, you spent, you know, a lot of people wanted to bend your ear about your guys. And, and you already mentioned J.K. Dobbins. We'll hopefully wait to hear his name and a lot of your, your guys. It could be uh, just a ridiculous year of how many guys get drafted. But Give us, maybe you can share with some of our listeners and our watchers, you like some of the NFL coaches and the scouts that, what was the big question for you about some of your guys and, and what were they, they know you have talent, right? But is there always, are they always trying to find something a little more insightful from you? Like maybe work ethic, practice technique, anything that you can share that what else these NFL, cause you've been to the league, you know what they're looking for. What were people bending your ear about with your guys? Yeah, they, they, don't, they want to know what kind of leaders they are. They want to know what they're like off the field. They want to know uh, just intimately, you know, what, what's the real story on them? Because uh, as we know, all these guys get coached up by their agents on, on how to handle the interviews and all that. And I think it goes back to the relationships that we have with the NFL teams, the GMs, the presidents, uh, the head coaches. And, uh, we, but we, we feel, uh, you know, much more, uh, you know, calls, you know, than, than we typically have in the past. And that was due to not having, you know, the pro days and, and not having as many visits and those kind of things. And they're just trying to find out who they are as people, their work ethic, uh, things like that. Uh, but, you know, the thing that I talk about all the time is just, it, you know, I don't know where teams value somebody or their need or wh- where they draft them. Uh, but I just tell them there's a lot of guys out there that, you know, they're going to be on your, they're going to be on your roster for at least six years. You know, someone like Jonah Jackson or KJ Hill or, uh, you know, Devon Hamilton. I mean, these guys are going to be on, I don't know where you pick them. It's the same thing I told them about Terry McLaurin. I don't, I don't know where you want to pick them. That's, that's your business. But that guy's going to be on your team for a long time. And, uh, you know, so many of these coaches are really looking for uh, leadership. They're looking for discipline, they're looking for good guys who are doing things the right way with accountability. And that, that's where our program's built on. Ryan, you guys are killing it in recruiting, to say the least. This can't hurt the cause at all. I know we talked about this on the conference call a couple weeks ago. But uh, just speak about how much you sell this with you guys flooding the NFL draft with players. You, as I said, you guys are just putting together a historic recruiting class. You can't talk about specific guys, but – just how much do you think this helps with, with recruiting? No, oh, it's huge. It's huge because, I mean, first off, the blueprint's there. But then after tonight, you know, we have more first-round draft picks than any other school in the history of the draft, which is awesome. Uh, but then, you know, when you sit there and you talk to a family, and, you know, and, and just kind of go through the dream of developing to go play in the NFL, uh, and then you actually go see it, you know, with, with, with these guys, then it just gives you more uh, – you know, people just, you know, they believe you, to be honest with you. And a lot of people say a lot of things in recruiting, but, uh, you know, this is true testimony and not just theory. And, and that's, that's what, you know, we can say you can be the next Jeff Okuda. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be the next Jeff Okuda. you got to work at it. I mean, it takes a lot of work. And uh, you talk about Mick Marotti and the impact he's had on these guys and Larry Johnson with Chase and, and Bosa and these guys. I and mean, there's just so many hours of work that need to be done. But uh, for somebody who has the talent, has the work ethic, has the, the family support system in place, and then bring them to a place like Ohio State where we have the blueprint. If you fall in line and you do all the work, there's a great chance you're going to be the next guy to call, get called on stage. All right. Before we cut you loose, I want to welcome in my colleague, uh, Bo Bishop from up in Cleveland. Uh, Bo, I'm sharing the, the bearded twins here. Look at this. You got a question for Coach Day as well. as I mean, can believe we have this guy on draft night. He just had three of his former guys get taken, one, two, and three. He's waiting on more, and he's jumping into our little portal, which is wild. So. <laughs> We appreciate it. Coach, just one of the most surreal things I've ever seen, man, to have three guys that were here go one, two, three. I mean, I guess we're prepared. We, we, we probably were prepared for it and that this is what the mocks have looked like forever. But to see it come to reality and to think they were all here and obviously to you close to the last two, I, I just don't know if you'll ever see anything like that again in the history of the NFL. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. You know, it's, it's just amazing to me and – uh, again, I, you know, just mentioned earlier, it's just, it's just great to see guys hit their stride this year. And you think about, you know, at this time last year, if you were to say these are the top three picks in the draft, people probably would have sent you to an insane asylum. And, but then look at what they've done. Look at yeah. the, the work they've put in. And, uh, you know, this it doesn't just happen. 
there's just so much work in, in uh, you know, grinding and early wake up calls and film study and just, there's just a lot that goes into it. And uh, so happy for these guys because hard work pays off and good things happen to good people. No doubt about it. I know you're going to be scheduled. I think you're on Golik and Wingo tomorrow morning, right? You're going to be burning the yeah. midnight, oil, midnight oil, I believe. So yeah, no, this is a good time uh, to be a Buckeye. And so if there's opportunities, then I'm going to, I'm going to make sure uh, all the recruits hear about it because this is, this is fun and this is the blueprint. And uh, yeah, this is, this is something to celebrate. Well, this is what people need to know. You don't forget where you came from because you're in our little world. We might have a couple hundred people listening. You're going to have uh, millions more. So Thank you for uh, paying attention to the little people as well here tonight. And uh, we can't wait to see you. Best to your family. Be safe. And thanks for everything you're doing. No, absolutely, guys. Everybody stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you guys once this all clears up. And maybe, maybe I'll have the beard. Maybe I won't. We'll have to see how, it. how it goes. Keep but. it. No, you look Keep good. It. You look good, Coach. You look <laughs> fantastic. Uh, Keep uh, it. I appreciate it. I know, all right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Keep it until it goes gray, you know? I mean, it's I know. Good. He's they say Ohio State football coaches age fast, except for this guy. Uh, yeah. Not him. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's some great, there's some great popping in though. I got to tell oh, you, it's, wow. it's popping in. So yeah, I don't know. Little just for men, Keith Hernandez style fixes it right up. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if I can do that. Let, let, let it flow. Let it flow. Yeah. I'm well done, Coach. Congrats again. See Thank you, you for your time. We Thanks, appreciate. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right, that's Coach Ryan.